Hey guys, Andy here, and we need to talk about why I haven't been posting a whole heck of a lot on here lately. In order to really get into that, we need to kind of go over the timeline of events. So, as you guys know, I graduated from Lakeland University of Japan on August 6th, 2022. Woo! Very excited, very proud of that moment, and it's definitely an accomplishment I'll treasure forever. You know, especially being the first in my family to graduate from college, even though it took me 18 years since I graduated from high school to graduate from college. It's all about that persistence, baby. But that being said, after the celebration kind of wore off and we kind of got back into the real world, things got a little confusing. I just struggled a lot with what I want to do and what I want to be moving forward. And I know obviously people are going to be like, well, get a fucking job, ya bum. I mean, doy, right? Because after graduating, I switched my visa over from student visa to job hunting visa, uh, designated activities technically for job hunting purposes. Okay. So, <laughs> um, which allows me to stay in Japan for six months and I can extend it for an additional six months. So I'm going to stay in Japan for up to a year just on that visa alone. And it does allow me to work part time as well. So I'm able to still earn income and continue to do my thing out here in Japan. About three weeks after graduating, I managed to find myself a little part time job. And I don't want to get into the job itself or who my boss is or anything like that. Uh, just for privacy reasons, but suffice it to say, it does utilize my creative skills as a videographer, photographer, and video editor, and just all around creative person. So I am very excited to be utilizing my skills in a more professional setting instead of just doing freelance work. But at the same time, it has been taking a lot out of me mentally, creatively, even though it is a part time job. By the time I get home from work, I'm just thoroughly exhausted. You know, I feel like I don't really have much time for anything else when I get home from work. You know, I just have enough time to get something to eat, shower, watch a few YouTube videos, and before you know it, it's time for bed. And I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> I gotta get up and do the whole thing over again. And I think the one thing that I really don't like about my job is the commute. Even though the commute is short, relatively, just the timing because I have to go during rush hour and my job doesn't offer any sort of flex time or anything like that. Like it's set in stone, the, the hours. Um, you can change the days and stuff, but the hours remain the same. You know, I suggested, you know, maybe we do like a flex time or maybe work from home on some days or something like that and was met with a lot of resistance. So obviously that's off the table. You know, part time, it's not too bad of a job but I don't really see myself going full time there. The amount of stress and everything that, that job puts me under, even though creatively it can be pretty rewarding, but just the amount of stress, it's a little too much. So I've been looking around for other types of work, been met with a lot of clearing up of misconceptions about job hunting here in Japan. I was under the impression that once you get your bachelor's degree, you can find a job in a visa pretty easily out here because everybody's looking for English teachers or if you're skilled in a sort of like IT like programming and things like that you can find jobs pretty easily as long as you got the bachelor's degree and you speak English and if you speak even just a little bit of Japanese that definitely goes a long way too but uh, I'm not quite there yet <laughs> which has been another problem uh, but that's a whole nother video so I found that even just finding Joe Blow English teacher jobs has been a little difficult because of my um, background, you know, with doing video editing and things like that. And I've applied to jobs both with my video editing experience and without. And if I apply without, I don't get any sort of interviews at all. But I have gotten a few interviews using my video editing experience. All of them have asked me like, well, why do you want to do this English teaching thing? You have all this experience in this field doing something completely different. Like why, why do you want to give all that up to go teach English? 
And obviously I can't tell them the real answer of, well, I kind of need a visa and a paycheck. So uh, can you help me out here, bud? So, you know, I give them like the standard sort of, well, you know, I believe children are our future. And, you know, I always wanted to teach kids and stuff like that. And, you know, I just try to butter them up as best I can, but they still don't buy it. I always get that rejection of, well, we're looking for someone with a little more experience. So gone body my show, Andy San. So I'm looking for jobs in other fields as well, more aimed at like digital marketing because that seems to be the most relevant for my skill set. You know, I don't have the the programming savvy for IT work, although there have been a few jobs that do offer pretty extensive training. So it is a possibility. Just got to keep my eye out for uh, those particular jobs. And then as far as English teaching goes, well, <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. I'll still apply, but not really gonna expect anything from those jobs. So I'm aiming more for like digital marketing, video editing, stuff like that. Like I said earlier, you know, it has kind of caused me to just think about what the hell I even wanna do moving forward because graduating from college, like I said, has been a very major goal for me and it's been almost the major driving force in my adult life was to get that degree. Now that I have it, it's left a, just a major void in my life. And, you know, I've dealt with a lot of postgraduate depression, really, because it's just like, the hell do I do now? I feel like I'm just kind of walking around aimlessly. You know, I've done a lot of thinking, uh, especially this week, because I've taken some time off from work to really uh, just think about stuff. And uh, hasn't been easy, to say the least, but it has been helpful. I think one of the things that I've been thinking about is, you know, getting a bit more serious about being a creative. And originally when I thought of that, I thought, well, I just get a job in the creative industry and be an actual professional creative, you know, getting paid to do what I do in a non freelance setting. There was always something that didn't quite sit right with me in doing that. You know, I just felt like I was, losing a lot of, of control in that. And I would be doing stuff that, yes, you know, does utilize my skills and, and such, but wasn't quite what I was looking for. You know, it's just kind of so-so, you know? So I really thought long and hard about it. And I've decided that since I'm all graduated, got my bachelor's, all that fun stuff, I don't have to worry about any of that anymore. I really want to take doing YouTube a bit more seriously because I think that building up YouTube to initially be a secondary source of income is the way to go because with, with freelancing, freelancing gave me that little taste of what life could be like as a full-time creative. And freelancing is great. And I recommend it for most people who are you know, doing the YouTube thing or doing any sort of creative work. You know, it's a good way to get paid very easily and utilize your skills and allows you to practice getting more efficient. And freelancing has given me so much, like you guys don't even know. But it does come with its own caveats. You know, obviously taxes being a major headache for me. Um, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. Uh, I just have somebody else deal with all that headache which helps, but uh, it does take a little bit extra out of my cut. But uh, the main disadvantage of freelancing for me is the feast or famine schedule of events. And basically what it is, is that during months where gigs are plentiful, gigs are very plentiful. Like I'm just up to my eyeballs and gigs and, you know, I'm basically rivaling my main income with just freelance work during those times, sometimes even exceeding it. And then there's months like this month, actually, this whole quarter, to be honest, where I feel like everybody's just ghosting me. They don't know my name. They're off doing something else and I'm just forgotten about. That doesn't really make for a, a good, stable source of income, you know? So that's kind of the, the disadvantage of freelancing. I got this idea from Logan Paul's former editor, Hayden Hillier-Smith, who started up a fantastic podcast called The Editing Podcast. 
with another editor, Jordan. And he was talking about it as well because he was working for Logan, doing daily uploads and things like that. And he said, you know, once they stopped doing that and once Logan kind of shifted his focus to other things, he didn't have a whole lot of work. He kind of faced that sort of crisis of like, what the hell do I do now, right? And so he, that's when he started making his own content for his channel. And then that later parlayed that to the editing podcast, which I tune into every week. I learn a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So he said just making content for himself has really been a game changer, both just creatively and financially as well, because he feels like he's much more financially consistent. You know, I've always wanted to do YouTube, maybe not full time, but you know, as a secondary source of income at least. And I just never really committed to it because I was always worried of what if I spent too much time and not pass classes or anything like that, or, you know, I really need to get this degree and need to get serious about it. And now I don't have to worry about degrees. I think that's going to be my next major goal is to be able to do YouTube eventually full time, not anytime soon, obviously. <laughs> I don't want people in the comments being like, Andy, you're throwing your life away to do YouTube. What's the matter with you? Uh, again, this is a this is a long term goal. This isn't going to be an overnight thing. OK, we're really going to be putting into the work, but it's going to be a very slow process. What does that mean for this channel or even my other channel, which, by the way, I quietly started up uh, edit with Andy once again, uh, kind of got buyer's remorse with putting the videos up on this channel and it didn't really work out all that well. So I just shifted it back to the old one. Uh, so this is more Japan focused, but what does it mean for content creation in general for me? Well, obviously I'm going to be doing it a lot more. <laughs> and uh, now that I just have a part-time job instead of school and a bunch of other things, I want to put more focus on, on YouTube because not only do I think building up that secondary source of income would be good from a financial standpoint. I think also creatively having that outlet is good too. It is something that I missed, you know, making videos and doing live streams and all kinds of other stuff and interacting with you guys. I think that's also what's uh, kind of made my depression a bit more aggressive is not uh, doing more YouTube videos for you guys. Cause you know, this is my own creative outlet, but if I want to take it seriously and have this be a viable secondary source of income and eventually make this like a, a full-time gig, then I gotta get serious about it and actually put in the effort and do the research and all this, that, and the other. There will be changes. It's not gonna be an overnight thing, like I said, uh, but it is gonna be progressive. And I do want to let you guys know about that ahead of time so I don't get a whole bunch of comments of what the hell is this in my feed, you know? Guys, I've been doing a little bit of experimenting here and there with different things, uh, namely shorts. Uh, shorts have really been a game changer for me. And I think that I'll be utilizing shorts a lot more, especially during weeks where I'm really busy or just not able to make like a full video. And it's also a good way to kind of spotlight older content as well. But I do want to make uh, shorts that are newer content too. Um, like with uh, Mr. Peachy, for example. I think Mr. Peachy would be great for shorts content. And I have a few ideas for, for utilizing that character for shorts. So you might be seeing him as well. Yeah, like I said, I've just been saving up a whole bunch of different ideas. I have whole ideas folder on my desktop for, uh, for different things. And now that I don't have as many excuses, get my ass out there and make that quality content, I'll be doing that. Just want to let you guys know that uh, change is on the horizon. It's not going to be overnight, but it is happening. Uh, with that said, though, I am going to be continuing my job hunt, of course. <laughs> you know, got to pay the bills and uh, keep the government off my ass with the visa and whatnot. So even if YouTube just ends up being a secondary source of income, and doesn't go beyond that. I think that'll be good, but I do want to give it a shot, you know, because I've been at this whole YouTube thing for over 16 years, going on 17, regardless of what happens, I do want to uh, really do this. 
a bit more seriously. So anyway, I think that's that's enough rambling for one day. Just be on the lookout for uh, some new stuff. And uh, with that said, guys, well, this is Andy. Sign off for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Down in hand